welcome to episode 32 of the Graceful Tangle podcast. I'm Amy Kate, a young but passionate knitter and crocheter. You can find all of the links to my various social media platforms in the description box below, as well as links to my Etsy and Ravelry shops where you can find all of my patterns. So if you go over and check those out. And last but not least, you'll be able to find a link in the description box below for show notes for this episode. So if you have any questions or want a few like jotted down notes about everything that I talk about in this episode, you can find those um, by going to that link. So be sure to do that. If you have any other questions about anything that I'm about to talk about, you can just shoot me a message on any of my platforms or in the comments below. So be sure to do that um, if you have any questions. So I have quite a few things to talk about with you guys this week. We were on vacation for the past few days. So while I didn't get as much done as I had originally hoped, um, I was able to get quite a few things done. And I'm really excited to talk about them with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump right in to finish objects. Okay, so I have four, three, four, yeah, four finished objects to show you guys this week. I guess one is kind of a really small finished object, but we'll talk about that last. So first things first, the thing that you have seen, this is actually the first, the only project that you actually saw last week, um, out of all of these, which is kind of crazy. Um, but these are finished socks, a pair of finished socks for my weather. So I've been working on these for a few weeks now and they are finally done. I love them so, so much. So let's go ahead and talk about them for just a second. I used Knit Picks Static in the color Terrarium. Um, it's just a really, really beautiful mossy green. Um, I absolutely love these socks. I knew my, that my brother was going to love them too. And I'm really, really excited to give them to him. Um, yeah, super excited about that. These are also the Medium Sock Blockers by Knit Picks if you are interested in that. Absolutely love them. And I will include um, links to the blockers and the yarn in the description box below. Um, so be sure to check that out. I used Chiagu size 1 2.25 millimeter needles for these socks and all of my other socks. So that's the needle size I use for most of my socks. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I used the Manila socks on Magic Loop Pattern by K of the Crazy Sock Lady. That is definitely my favorite pattern that I have found. Um, however, I did modify the numbers a little bit. So, she has that pattern written for 56, 64, and 72 stitch count socks. Um, and, like, my family is all, you know, all over the place in sizing. So, these are actually 60 stitch socks. Um, so, it actually worked out perfectly. Um, the only major thing that I had to change in the pattern is just the heel flop and guess it. Um, and literally all I did was just one less, um, or I guess two less rows on the heel flap. And then I th that probably translated to about one less repeat on the heel, um, heel tone. And then a couple less rounds on the, um, heel gusset just because I didn't have as many stitches as Kate did. So, um, I hope that makes sense. If you want, like, further details about these specific socks, let me know because I could do, like, a separate video or something like that about them. Um, but yeah, I think they're gonna fit him perfectly. They fit the medium sock blockers perfectly, which gives me hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, I absolutely love these and I'm really excited to give them to him. I am gonna go ahead and say, um, so I am planning on filming a whole separate video with everything that I made or am making, um, for Christmas 2020. It's something I've been planning on doing for a while now. I've gotten a few requests for it and I've also been... Um, people have just showed a lot of interest in that video. I'm hoping to do that. Um, timing is a little bit difficult just because I'd rather not release that video before Christmas in case anybody saw it, but I actually have to film it before I give the gifts away. So it's a little bit tricky um, time-wise, but I'm hoping to do that. I have an idea in my mind on how I can make it work. So stay tuned for that video. You can let me know in the comments if you're interested in it. That would be really helpful. Um, but yeah, so that is suck or finished object number one. Alrighty, finished object number two is another pair of socks. So I knit these on our vacation. 
Um, this was not quite the only thing I knit on, but pretty much. Um, however, I knit the whole pair, so I'm not complaining. These actually don't match. They kind of almost do, but I don't hate that they match. I'm so proud of myself. It was kind of accidental. Um, you know, I talked about with these socks how I was knitting the, the first one and how it was like the entire time I was telling myself that I wasn't going to try hard to make the match. It would be fine if they didn't. Um, but then once it got down to it, I just wanted to make the match. However, for these... I did try to make the match, actually. Um, I knit the whole first sock, which I believe was this one. Yeah, I think it was this one. Um, I knit the whole... Actually, I could probably tell by the toe. It might have been this one, actually. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, but I knit the whole first sock. And then I actually did, like, take out the yarn from the cake and try to, you know, line it up and make it match. Um, but then I just realized that Right, I, I thought I did, and like I cast on, started knitting, and then I didn't have the first sock with me um, as I was knitting on this one, so I just kept going and going, and then I realized, like, when I got to the foot that it wasn't going to match. And I was like, okay, well, at that point I had no time to do it back, so I just decided to go for it. Um, and they're totally fine. Like, I'm honestly really glad that I made a pair of socks that don't exactly match, just because, I don't know, I'm trying to prove for myself that things don't have to be perfect <laughs> um but i really like them i really really like them this was one of the colorways of static that was a little bit more difficult um for me to find the repeat in anyway so it worked out for the best um this is nitpick static in a color neptune i believe um again it'll be linked in the description box these are the large sock blockers um and yeah for the large sock blockers really well so i'm hoping they will fit my <laughs> other brother really well um but yeah and then with these i just followed the 64 stitch um pattern from the same pattern that i used for the other socks so i'm using that same pattern for all of these socks and then i'm gonna show um i'm just modifying the stitch count a little bit here and there just based on different people's feet um but yeah really really happy with these okay my next finished object, I'm so happy that I have so many to show y'all. It feels so good. Okay, this one is super, super special. So my grandmother's birthday um, is actually jumping into design talk a little bit. I guess I should have prefaced that. Um, but yeah, so this is a mini for my grandmother. Her birthday is, as I'm recording this tomorrow, um, it's December 30, 21st, excuse me, 21st. Um, however... The, um, when you'll see this, it'll actually already be passed, but that's okay. So, this is Beanie that I made for her. It is my first co-work design. And I love it so much. So, it was a little bit tricky, you know, to figure out the repeat and all of that jazz related to creating this design. Um, but I'm so, so happy with it. I'm actually really happy with the crown decreases as well. I just love how they turned out. So yeah. Um, I use Knit Picks Muse. The pink is the color Affection or Affectional, something like that. Um, and then the blue is Savvy. And yeah, I just love this little bee so much. I think she's really going to like it too. And I can't wait to give it to her. Um, this will be a pattern coming in early 2021. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, it'll just be a little bit. Um, a little bit later of a release, so I wanted to go ahead and show it. But yeah, I absolutely love it so much. So yeah, I really, really love this beanie. I actually already have a, um, like, pattern name completely picked out, and I am going to wait to share it with you guys for a little bit later. Um, but super, super happy with it. And I will link to this yarn in the description box below as well if you want to check it out. Um, Muse has become one of my all-time favorites. There is just something so magical about knitting with single ply and I love it so much. Um I guess I could put it on for you guys. So yeah. My goal was to make it nice and snug. Um she goes on walks like daily and so I was kinda hoping that she could wear it. Um, you know, this time of year when it's chilly she could wear a hand knit um hat and I really wanted to create a design after her as well. So really really love it and i am so so excited to give it to her i think the only thing i'm gonna add is a pink 
pom-pom. Just a small one on the top. Um, I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. I like it without a pom-pom. Originally, I wasn't going to do a pom-pom because I thought she would prefer it without one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet, but I absolutely love it, and I'm really, really excited to give it to her. Alrighty. Now, my last finished object isn't really a finished object, but I did want to chat briefly about it anyway. Um, let me see if I have it here in my crazy, ridiculous pile. Oh, it's right here on the stand, ready for me to talk about them. So these are um, crocheted velvet scrunchies. I released this pattern as a free pattern on my blog and a full YouTube tutorial here on my channel. So I will link those two things in the description box below so that you can check them out for yourself. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of a surprise release that I did, and I hope you guys like it. I know a couple of people have already made them, which is super exciting. Um, and I just love these little scrunchies so much. So if you are looking for, like, a super last-minute Christmas gift, these are really the perfect thing. Um, I have a whole bunch. Not a whole bunch. I actually need to package a whole bunch. Um, but I will be giving a few more of these away, um, as Christmas gifts or little stocking stuffers. It's just the perfect little handmade touch to a gift. So, really, really love these. Um, they are my favorite scrunchies ever. And it just so happens that they're handmade. And that makes me really happy. Um, but yeah. So, if you want to check out that tutorial, be sure to do that. Alright, so that is finally it for finished objects. I think that is the longest finished objects section we have had in a long time. And that feels so, so good. And there will be more next week, for sure. Which is super exciting. Um, but now let's go ahead and talk about some works in progress. Okay, so I have two works in progress to show you guys this week. The first is another pair of socks. So these ones will be for my sister. Have you noticed the theme here? I'm trying to make socks for everybody in my family. Um, and if all goes according to plan, I will have three pairs of finished object finished socks to show you guys next week because that is what I have left to do. I'm so ridiculous. Like, so ridiculous. But I want to do this so bad, and I know they're going to love them. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try my absolute best, and that's the best I can do. So, these socks are going to be so beautiful, I cannot even handle it. Like, I'm going to be so jealous of these socks. I'm going to have to get another skein of this yarn just so I can make myself a pair. Um, but this is Nitpick Static in the color Hope Chest. Let me show you the cake. Here is what the cake looks like. Um, it just has, I mean, it's so gorgeous. Like, I cannot get over this game. Um, this is, like, white, a little bit of white, some gray, um, like an eggplant color, plum. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I really like that it has a gray base um, because it's going to work better for Emily because she can't keep anything white to save her life. Um, so... I think these are going to work really well for her. Um, so far, I have only done the cuff <laughs> on the first sock, and I don't actually think I'm even done with it. Um, I could count real quick, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I am not even quite done with the cuff. Um, however, again, if everything goes according to my plan, I will finish this sock today. I'm a little bit skeptical that that's going to happen, especially because I will be doing something else this afternoon, which I'll chat about in a second. Um, but yeah. Really, really love these, and I am hoping, hoping, hoping that I can just get them done in time. Um, and they're so beautiful, and I love them so stinking much. I can't even tell you. Um, but yeah, so that is my first work in progress. And for those, I'm using the same pattern. Um, however, I'm actually following the 56 stitch count for those, so I'm following the pattern to a T. Um, and then my next work in progress is actually a commission. So this is something that I chatted about a few weeks ago, actually, that I was going to be starting. Um, and we got the yarn shipped, but it took 20 days for it to arrive, just because of how behind the USPS is right now. Um, I completely, I get it. You know, I'm not, I'm not blaming them. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to complain at all. Um, it was unfortunate, of course, because I would have loved to have this done before now. Um, it has to be done by Christmas. I'm hoping to get it done by Tuesday. Um, which is actually, they will be seeing this. So hopefully, by the time you're actually watching this, I'm done with this project. <laughs> um, but we'll have to see. I don't know. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna happen. It's just gonna take a lot of willpower. Um, and the pattern is 
not tricky, but just the stitch pattern isn't as fast as I want it to be, so it's a little bit slow going. Um, however, this is the Perfect Pockets Scarlet. I'm sure you've heard of it, even if you don't actually know that you've heard of it. Um, it is a super duper, duper popular crochet pattern. Um, you can find it on Ravelry. That's how I got it. Um, however, this person that wants this actually found it on Pinterest. So, you know, it's pretty much everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I'm using black yarn. I know you can't really see the stitch pattern, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but basically, it's just half double crochet, and then this wrapped double crochet stitch, and then I'll do more half double crochet at the bottom. Um, it's a really straightforward pattern. Like, I'm really grateful for that. It's pretty mindless. Um, it's just gonna take a lot of time, and I'm really hoping that I, you know, can find the time to put into it so that I can get it done ASAP. That is definitely my focus right now. Um, I'm using a size J hook for this. I don't actually know if it's over here, but that's the hook I'm using. Um, the pattern recommends, like, an in, I think, and I had to go way down to achieve gauge. Um, the designer must be a really tight crochet, but anyway, that's not that big of a deal. Um, I would prefer to use a J over an N in the first place, so I'm not complaining about that at all. But yeah, the yarn that I'm using, it took so long to get here, <laughs> um, but it is Lion Brand Heartland in the color Black Canyon, so it's really pretty. I really, really like the color. Um, it's black, but it's kind of heathered with white, and it's actually really beautiful. Um, but yeah, here's to hoping I can get this done in time. The good news is, I shouldn't have prefaced this by saying this. The good news is we know this person, uh, she's a family friend, and so we're just gonna, like, I'm just gonna drop it by her house in her mailbox or something. It's not a big deal to get it to her, it's just me finishing it. It's the only thing that's holding us up right now. So there's no shipping, I don't have to ship it, which is great, because that obviously would definitely not get there back up on Christmas, even if I shipped it, you know, on Monday. Um, but, yeah, so, it's just getting it done. I'm hoping to make some really, really good progress on that this afternoon. As with that sock, and today's technically a scrappy set day, and I was hoping to make a decent amount of progress on that as well, but it's okay. Everything is going to get done eventually. Alrighty, so those are my two works in progress, um, and I'm not going to do any design talk this week. I showed the scrunchies um, as a new pattern and that beanie that I had worked up this week, so I'm going to hold off for design talk until next week. However, let's go ahead and talk about a little devotional. As you guys know by now, I have been talking about one specific word for the past three episodes. Um, I've done joy, peace, and love so far, and I've gotten so much good feedback from you guys that you like this idea, and I'm so, so grateful for that. Um, so this week, I wanted to talk about one last word before Christmas, and that is hope. So I imagine that there is kind of a lot of tension around the word hope right now. Um, it's kind of a word that well, everybody knows, um, I don't want to say few people because that's not true, but it's hard, it's something that is easy to think about, easy to think you have, but hard to actually live out, um, which is, in, in my experience at least. So, again, while it's difficult to maintain, it's something that is vital to the Christian faith. And to kind of put that into context for you, think about when Jesus was born. Jesus' birth was a promise that was given so, so many years before it actually happened. And there was so much hope and promise surrounding his birth. And I cannot even begin to imagine the way that it felt when he was here and he was born. And the amount of hope that was then lifted. Like not, now they had hope that Jesus was going to come. And now all those people have hope or had hope that the promise was going to continue to be continue to be fulfilled, excuse me, and that um, Jesus was going to do all God said he would do, and he did, and that is what is so beautiful about hope. First Peter one thirteen says, therefore, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit, fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, and that is exactly the point that I was trying to make in just a second ago, how so much hope and anticipation was built on the birth of Jesus, and now he's here, and we can rejoice in that fact, and it's just so, so beautiful. So, 
I feel like hope has kind of been lost for a great portion of 2020 just with you know COVID and everything that has happened because of that and then other events that have happened in our nation and in our world um throughout this year but Christmas time is a time to have hope and the end of the year is a time to have hope for the next year and so I hope that each of us no matter how difficult it is to maintain or how um you know holy day can be to find that we all have a sense of hope this year even if you know Christmas doesn't look exactly how you hoped it would or traditions have been changed because of necessary precautions that have had to be made I hope that we all have a Christmas week full of love joy peace and hope and then help that be covered over into 2021 so that is my hope for all of you um, I hope you all have an amazing Christmas week. I, for one, am so, so excited. I have an infinite amount of things <laughs> to get done, per usual. Um, but I am hoping that, you know, they all happen and all pan out in a way that I hope. That's where my hope is right now. <laughs> we'll put it into context, huh? Um, so yeah, a little bit of a life update, I guess. So, like I said, we were in Gulf Shores visiting grandparents um, the past couple of days. We left on Wednesday, came back on Saturday, and it was a really nice visit. It was different than it's been in the past just because of, um, you know, some things that have had to be, be changed. Um, but it was really, really wonderful. Um, I put a little Instagram post about it, so you can go check that out if you want. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, and as always, I am so, so grateful you know, to have had that trip and to have had that little bitty vacation, um, but it's so good to be home. So good. I, um, when I was younger, I used to be, you know, let's go do something. Let's go. Let's get out of the house. And now I'm like, can I just stay home, please? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, definitely I've changed a lot with the years. Um, so yeah, we have big plans for, well, I say that we don't have huge plans. We have a busy week ahead, I guess is what I should say, as most people probably do in one way or another. Um, actually, some super duper exciting news that I hinted to a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it, just because it's not related to knitting and crocheting and this channel at all, really. Um, however, we are going this afternoon to pick up a car, and I am beyond thrilled. This has been you know, such a long process. Um, I am currently 18. I got my license, um, it was actually December, it was like right after Christmas, um, the year I was 16. So my birthday was my first. I waited to get my license for about six months, which I do not regret that decision at all. I was so much more confident of a driver at that point. Um, however, we have been looking for a car and have been on the hunt for one literally all year. Um, especially since when I graduated. So, um, it was kind of, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit of a senior present, I guess. Senior graduation gift. Um, however, that did not pan out exactly how we had anticipated. Um, and however, when we were in Wolf Shores the last day, my uncle, who lives just 30 minutes from here, um, found one and called us and it was an amazing price. Um, and yeah. We are going to go pick that up this afternoon. I'm so grateful. I'm so excited that I can, you know, contribute um, a good portion of the cost, which is so validating. And I'm so grateful that I'm at a place where I can do that. Um, and that's awesome. I'm really, really, really excited about that. So that is our afternoon plans. And I'm also hoping to get a whole bunch of making done because, as you saw from my, prog from my projects, it really, really needs to happen. Um... But yeah, so that is my afternoon plans. I hope, again, that you all have an amazing Christmas week that is relaxing and full of joy. And just, I pray that you celebrate what it is, even if it's not exactly how you anticipated that it would be. Because I 100% believe that there is so much beauty in whatever you're doing, regardless of what exactly it looks like. So... I hope you all have a great week. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be able to get all your Christmas gifting done because, as you can see, I am a little bit skeptical <laughs> that I'm going to be able to get it done. Um, but you can send me all your good vibes and hopes of me actually accomplishing what I set it to accomplish. I really hope it can happen, guys. Um, I'm going to try my absolute best, and that's the best I can do. 
So I hope you all have a great week. Make sure to check out the show notes linked below and all of my other social media platforms. I have a few super fun things coming later this week. So stay tuned for those and I will catch you all later. Bye.